Hey players, how you doing? Welcome back to Player's Guide. On this episode of Player's Guide, I'm going to be talking about the state of Super Nintendo collecting. We're going to take a look at where the prices of the Super Nintendo have gone and what the rare and uncommon games look like. A live edition of Collector's Guide, a show that I do on YouTube, Player's Guide, and I'm doing it live here on Twitch. If you're not already subscribed on YouTube, please consider doing so. It makes a big difference for the channel. And if you'd like to see more content like this and you're watching on Twitch, please consider following Player's Guide on Twitch. We have nearly daily retro gaming content, nearly every single day. Okay, so let's take a look at the Super Nintendo and where it's at. 2008, the average price of a game was about $9 here. The current price of the average price of a Super Nintendo game is about 35 bucks. So huge increases um, in the Super Nintendo. Now the Super Nintendo has never been as cheap as the NES. And I think that is because it goes back to what I have mentioned before in other videos about um, the more modern and newer consoles as we um, move through the generations have a smaller and smaller window of discount where the games are discounted or essentially worthless or throwaways. In fact, it almost doesn't exist anymore. Um, there, there, it, it does, but the window is so small because there's so many collectors out there and so many people aware of things like the nostalgia factor. So what we've seen here is Super Nintendo was cheap for a while and kind of started to take off a lot around the same time as the NES. Now, I, I collected for Super Nintendo, but my main focus is NES, but there's a lot of other people that both collect NES and Super Nintendo because, you know, we have nostalgia for both of them. They're both great consoles from Nintendo, a lot of quality games, and um, it's a quality product. Like, uh, when, when we were kids, I don't know if you guys ever did this, right? You blow in the cartridge and it wouldn't work and you'd be hammering it down into the console and it still wasn't working. <laughs> you throw a game or something against the wall and then you pop it in and then it, whatever that did it made it work. Um... But you could do that with these games like now you wouldn't do that with them because you want to, you know, take care of them, preserve them and they have some value. I mean, the average price is thirty five dollars, but, you know, they're durable. You could be rough with them. And that's where I'm coming from with quality, because I know not every game is going to be great. I'm talking about an overall, you know, the cartridges um, and, you know, there was a lot of really good quality games in terms of gameplay, too. So we saw the console start to climb there around 2011. It just went up and up and up. This is when Nostalgia Factor hit. And then it plateaued 2017, just like the NES, until... And then, wait, we see a little bit of a dip here. There was... So it cooled off. It didn't just plateau. It had a little bit of cool off overall. That's not every game, just overall... And then in April, just like everything else in the video game market, it started to jump. And it looks like um, there's a, a small kind of dip here or, or plateau, but then it just continues to keep shooting up and up and up. So we'll take a look at some of the games here and see if there's a dip. Because we've seen at this point there's, there's a dip on a lot of the more um, expensive and uncommon games where they've not necessarily reached their peak... But they've become so expensive that not everybody can afford them. So people are getting priced out and they're dipping. But that doesn't mean that they won't continue to go up in value because I think a lot of the truly rare games will continue to go up in value. Excite Bike, Mountain Bike Rally, Max. A lot of people don't even know about this game. We'll take a look at that. Hagane. Um, Hagane has really been hyped up. I don't think it's as rare as Arrow Fighters. I really don't. But it's got so much hype. Um, one of the things, actually, that m might we might see reflected in Hagana here was Mike Matei from Cinemassacre did a massacre 
uh, did a Hidden Gems video on that channel while Angry Video Game Nerd was off filming his movie. And when he covered that game, it it skyrocketed in price. It had a, well, maybe not skyrocketed, but it had a pretty big jump in price because there's a lot of people that didn't hear about it, uh, found out, oh, this game is a rare. I believe he said it was a blockbuster exclusive. Uh, so it got hyped up and the sales got hyped up. And since then, it's always, you know, it's had a pretty good name for itself that it's had a lot of hype behind it. Kind of, you know, it's kind of like the situation with Little Samson and Flintstone's Surprise at Dinosaur Peak, where Flintstone's Surprise at Dinosaur Peak is the more rare game than Little Samson. But Little Samson is very fun. Not that Flintstone's isn't, but a lot of people recognize it as a better game and it has a lot of hype ton of hype behind it and with a game like that and we're gonna see that with Hagane too is people who buy it don't just see it as a great game and a collector's piece they also see it as an investment that they're not willing to let go of so it keeps the price high because nobody's gonna say I'm gonna take like a 20% hit on this game because if they did they would probably lose money from what they purchased on some of these games unless they bought them a very long time ago but let's take a look at those and uh, we'll see exactly what I'm talking about here so here's Hagane Wow this is unbelievable uh, $23 back in 2007 when was it my angry video game nerd I want to say like he did that movie 2012 2013 something like that so yeah this game was climbing up uh, with with nostalgia factor and collectors uh, got a really big sale there and then was was still really like it had a few pricey sales those could be CIBs accidentally mixed in we don't know um, and and then you know it was it was climbing up I think it yeah it was about 2012 Mike Matei did that video um, and it spiked because I really I hadn't heard of the game either there's now I'm familiar with all the Super Nintendo games but at the time Super Nintendo was still very interesting because I was um, my main focus was the NES and I'd pick up the occasional Super Nintendo game here and there and it was exciting to collect for the Super Nintendo games because there was a few that I had never heard of really didn't know much about um, I remember like Metal Morph was one of the games, Soldiers of Fortune. Um, and then I just kind of found out about like these games looking for something new uh, to play. So I think there's probably a lot of other collectors like me in that boat at this time found out about Hagane. And like this is a rare game. This is an interesting and fun looking game to play. It's got a cool image and style. And then you saw Mike Matei talk about it, and it went from being just under 100 bucks here, which was still reasonably priced, considering. There was, there was definitely more expensive Super Nintendo games at the time. And this one just shot right up there. Um, wow, about $200. And here's the thing, it's it cooled off a little bit after the initial hype, but there's it's got all these peaks and valleys, and they're just continuously driving the price up and up and up. And, you know, $300 was pretty much the going rate for this game for a while in game stores and at conventions. And then it, it worked its way up. I remember seeing it around five 600 which we're going to see here. And then just like a lot of other Super Nintendo games, it kind of plateaued around this time. Uh, shortly after the NES plateaued, which I would say is like 2017. So Super Nintendo, um, maybe late 2017. So here we see in 2018, this game sort of set its price between five and $600, probably be depending on the condition because it's a rare game. And if it's in great condition, let's face it, you're going to pay a little bit more for that really good nice minty copy to have in your collection and then it dropped this is kind of cool here's a great time to snag it if you know you're still collecting and looking for it uh at that point because it, it some people i get it were priced out and that's why we probably saw the drop here 
uh, to around 400 bucks from nearly 600. And then April, March 2020, April and March 2020, this is, we've seen it for basically every game we've looked at just about, uh, it jumps up. And then this is weird, because this is something we saw in early spring, like February, March, April, when there was rumors of the, the PlayStation Store closing down. A bunch of PlayStation games jumped up at this time, but look at this. So did Hagane. Hagane jumped up to a thousand dollars from well, it says seven there. So yeah, six to seven hundred bucks to a thousand. That's huge. Well, this that says eleven hundred. So there's a tiny bit of a dip here. I would say that's just the high point. Like one sale was higher because there's one right before it for about a thousand. So about a thousand bucks is the going rate for Hagane now. Now, I was talking about Arrow Fighters. Let's take a look at Arrow Fighters. Um, because this is one that I've always thought is uh, much more rare than Hagane. It's one of the rarest, with the exception of a couple others that we're going to look at in just a second here. So, we look at 2008. The game was over 100 bucks. Uh, I think this was around the time I bought it for like 100 bucks. And I knew at this time this is one of the rarest or the rarest of the licensed north american released games retail releases um and there's an argument to be made that donkey kong competition and star fox um the super weekend competition were um retail which i i guess they were you know because they were sold um off to the general public um but they weren't like something you could buy brand new sealed in a box on a shelf at like a Toys R Us or something back in the day. Uh, that's not the case. So they're they're very special games and you can consider them to be part of the collection if you want or not. So Arrow Fighters, um, I guess here you could have looked at and said, oh, I got burned on the deal. But I definitely didn't feel that way because I felt, you know, this is one of the rarest games. If there's a game to go up in price, it'll be this one. And it definitely has. It took a while, but Nostalgia Factor hit. More and more people collecting it, realizing how rare this game actually was. There wasn't any famous YouTuber to really build it up and then, you know, get people talking about it. And I kind of have thought that it's flown under the radar a bit. And that sounds weird because it really hasn't. All the all the people watching this who are really into Super Nintendo collecting know about this game and have it in their collection or want to have it in their collection because they know how rare it is. But there's there's usually not many of these for sale. Like they there's usually maybe one or two on eBay at any time. Let's take a look. I've already got it pulled up here. And I was kind of shocked at some of these prices. So this this one is a legitimate copy, it looks like, but it's in rough shape. If you look here, it's got, um, you know, some some label, I guess, like, they've ripped the label off. It's torn. Um, they do have pics of the board, so I'm pretty confident in, in this copy uh, being legitimate. Uh, $700 US, buy it now. Not bad. Here's another copy. Obviously in, in better condition and they're claiming 100% authentic. Uh, it's going, they're, they're wanting $1,500 for it. That's kind of high. This one's at 1100 That seems a bit more where I feel like this should be at. It just has these stickers here. I'm surprised they didn't take those off and just left it on. Um, and then obviously there's a bunch of bootlegs, you know, that just... It's disgusting that they're they're up here. Unfortunately, uh, I don't know who wants those in their collection. Here's so all the buy it nows are are pretty pretty pricey. Um, but yeah, let's let's look at the chart here, price charting. So it's it's gone up. Um, and let's take okay. So let's look at April. So February it was at kind of its low point, and then March April it went up a bit. It didn't. It didn't jump like these other games because it was sort of at that price before. And it had a little bit of a dip when Super Nintendo cooled off. And then February and March, 
is when it really started to jump up to about a grand. And now it's cooling off a bit, it looks like. But that was that was just kind of a, a really, you know, um, like a peak, a really expensive sale. Because before that, there's other sales that are um, just below it. So it's still climbed its way up. There could be, a, the next sale could be one of these $1,100 copies. And it'll be right up there with Hagane. But I do believe that this game is more rare than Hagane. Uh, Hagane has a lot of hype behind it. So Donkey Kong Country Competition. This game was like 500 bucks steady for a long time, I remember. And then it, it kind of gradually climbed. But it, it's weird because the sales were... You know, they were kind of sparse, like they weren't that frequent as you can kind of tell here. So that's why the price jumps up and down and climbs all over. But uh, the the general direction is that it's gone up and up and up. And now it's sitting around $2,000 here, it looks like. When was this spike? So March, April uh, 2020 is when it, when it really jumped up here, but not not as much as a lot of these more common games have so this game was always a little bit cheaper than donkey kong country competition but was somewhat comparable to it it's you know it's a little bit more common but it's similar concept right and uh, it was around 200 bucks for a while and then we see here it's climbing up and th this one climbed up a little bit more gradually i think that's because there's or th there seems to be more copies of this one available. And, you know, there's there's more people that are fans of the Donkey Kong series than the Star Fox series, I would say. And that's why we've, you know, seen more sales of this game. Um, it, it, it seems to be more common. It's, it's not quite as desirable. Um, but let's take a look here at where, where we're going at now. So here's around the plateau. So it made its way up to a grand. That's pretty good. It stuck around there. That was basically the average going rate for a while. And then September of 2020. So in April and May, nothing. There just, maybe there just wasn't any sales. And then one sold for a little bit less and then it, it jumped up. So that doesn't really follow any pattern like any of the other games. Uh, now it's cooled off a bit. So that's interesting to see. Super Nintendo is kind of weird because what we're going to see here is some rare games mixed in with uncommon games that are just very popular, have a cult following, or um, are really overhyped. So let's start with one that is a true rarity um, is Final Fight Guy. So, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised at some of these prices here, like $6, $3, $5. I think those must have been in terrible shape. Now, I know these games were undervalued back then, 2008, 2009. But yeah, I kind of thought of them as like the sort of like $40 games. We see a few of those here, but it's not like a steady $40 game thing. Um, until when? here like to the end of 2010 and then it, something caused it to spike here a bit of a spike and then it jumped up to 50 and it kept climbing this is a nostalgia factor now that we're looking at that made it keep climbing up and up and up and as more collectors enter the market the harder it becomes to get some of these true rarities because there's just not enough to go around and it becomes this supply and demand thing right so this here, this is ridiculous because, okay, around $200 makes sense for t March 2016, but a uh, $450 one, that, some of these spikes here uh, that are tracked, like who know who really knows what happened there? They may not be 100% accurate. Here's where it maybe should have, should have been from like 250 to 270 to 40, you know, that, that makes sense. So this game is kind of undervalued i would say um for a while because it looks like it cooled off went down to under 200 dollars. so if you're a super nintendo collector still still very easily attainable and the weird thing here that i'm seeing uh from the super nintendo is that 
as much as many other consoles that I've looked at have really been affected uh, by COVID and people buying lots of video games uh, when, you know, everything was first shut down um, and people were getting stimulus checks and, and different support from other places or saving money by not going out and they were just staying home playing video games, buying retro stuff for their retro game rooms um you know a lot of these rare super nintendos didn't spike then like this one this one didn't spike back in april of 2020 but i mean it did start to climb here in october of 2020 which is weird and then it kept going up and up and now it's over 500 dollars with no sign of slowing down like there will be some dips here and there but this one will probably go up and part of that is is maybe people recognizing this game for it being as rare as it really is. Now, one that I don't think is as rare as it is and is near $600 now is Pocky and Rocky 2. So this one, I think, was like a $30 or $40 game for a while. Mm, here, here's where I remember the price being at. Even $50. So the nostalgia factor kicks in, goes up over $50. Now it's like a $100 game. You know, and I get it. Again, this kind of goes back to the supply thing. This is not a game that's easily found, right? It is rare or or, or more like very hard to find and a, a, a very, like very uncommon game. But it just, it really got hyped up. So did the original Pocky and Rocky, which is not a rare game. But it, that one you know commands a bit of a premium too now and so it went up to what do we got like 200 bucks here 250 bucks and that's where it kind of plateaued and then let's see april so around april this one was affected so it's some of the it looks like it's some of these more popular games that were already a little bit overvalued for the super nintendo um are the ones that are have seen the jumps and it's just kind of gotten out of hand this one i don't think that this one is worth um the value that it's selling for now uh at least compared to a lot of these other super nintendo games that we're seeing at the top of the list here on price charting earthbound is one of the most overhyped games of all time and what i mean by overhyped is not that it's overhyped in terms of you know it not being a good game overhyped in terms that it's a it's a good uncommon game and so many people speak so highly of it or say that it's so rare that it really gets a lot of momentum and hyped up so much that let's look at the demand for this one is about $350 for the going rate right now. I can see this game being around 100, 120. That makes sense for a physical copy of a popular game with a cult following to have a premium, just like Conquer's Bad Fur Day, uh, something like that. But really, this one's, you know. I don't want to say it's gotten out of hand because if we look at the rest of the Super Nintendo market, it really hasn't gone that wild. But it has gradually built up all this hype around it where it's sort of like this very uncommon must-own popular title uh, for the Super Nintendo. And because there's enough of them to go around and enough of a hype, it hasn't gone too, too, too wild. But it certainly, it certainly does have a lot of hype behind it. And so this, this is a great example of what, what I was talking about earlier and what I'm kind of thinking here um, with some of the more hyped up and popular titles seeing the, the, that COVID effect where people are like, hey, here's a game that, you know, I got a bit of money now. I'm going to buy this game that I wanted before. They're not buying this game that's really rare that they need to have. They're buying this game that is something that maybe they actually want to play that is, you know, uncommon or harder to find to add to their collection as well. Mega Man 7, I'm guessing, is going to be another example of this. 
great Mega Man game. Always. So, I mean, around here it says $25, $30. But I would say it was always had had a premium. Like, it was never... I never saw this game ever. Like, even in the early 2000s for like 10 bucks. Maybe you guys have, but I didn't. It was always over $20, $25, $30. Um, so, this, this chart here, this index is a great representation of Mega Man 7. And there's plenty of sales which serve as good examples. And it's climbed up. Just like every Mega Man game pretty much has across every console um, from the original series and the X series. I'm speaking about those ones. Um, we could say something different about things like uh, Battle Network and Legends. But yeah, I mean, I mean, generally, you know, Mega Man, it has a following. So the games, you know, they're not losing too much value. So this one went up and kept going up. And up and up and up and up. So up to like 200 bucks. So I'm kind of getting priced out here for a $200 Mega Man game. I don't know about you guys. But then it dips back down because the market cools off. But it really dips back down. And I think that's because of availability. Because this is not a rare game. This is... Um, I don't even know if it's really uncommon. I'd say it's uncommon because I don't see this one like I see Mega Man 2. Um... Or, or Mega Man X or X2. Mega Man X and X2 were the ones that were the more common Mega Man games. X3 and 7, you know, and Mega Man Soccer are, are a bit harder to find on the Super Nintendo. So it dropped back down, probably because of that. But because it's a Mega Man game and it's uncommon and the COVID thing, this one was definitely affected by, you know, that effect the same way we see with a lot of these other popular games. So when I picked this game up, it was around here, 40 bucks. So that's that's pretty accurate, I would say. And then it's it's just kind of gradually gone up and, and down a little bit here and there. But overall, it's just gone up with the nostalgia factor. Something happened here where it got hyped up. I'm not too sure. If you guys know, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, but then it made its way up to a $200 premium game. Uh, worked its way down a little bit, but it's always been around $200 for a very long time now for this one. And then, let's see. It didn't see much action, and it actually looks like it went down in April and May of 2020. And then eventually, maybe all those people were like, they bought the Earthbounds, their Mega Man 7s. Uh, the games like that, Pocky and Rocky 2, and then they're like, well, now I need a really rare game, so I'm going to buy Metal Warriors in July and August of 2020. And then it's it's worked its way back up, just like everything else on the Super Nintendo here. Um, this one kind of finds itself in a weird spot where um, it was affected by the COVID hype, but not as much as it probably should have been in comparison to the popular uncommon games versus being a rare game. It kind of finds itself somewhere in between, it looks like. Sonic Blast Man 2. I've always thought of this as a rare game. Uh, didn't have a premium like a lot of other rare games. Wasn't always the cheapest game. When Nostalgia Factor hit and more people started collecting Super Nintendo, we saw the price go up. And that's also part of that is because even though there's more people collecting and there's there's more demand, some of the more rare games get a little bit more recognition because the demand goes up because there just isn't enough to go around uh, for these games. Um, just like the popular titles, but the popular titles, um, they get a lot of hype. Sonic Blast Man 2, I don't think there's any hype for this game. Not that it's a bad game or anything. It's just not one that people get excited about. And that's been reflected here in the price. Um, but this has seen a very gradual increase. And I have always recognized this as a rare game that has never really been very expensive. But this shocks me when I see the price here of $240 and no sign of slowing down. It's just... Since May and June of 2020, it's just been going nuts. People have been going nuts for this game. Um, yeah, I mean, 
I, I would say that's weird, but it's not because we've seen the, the COVID spike where things have just gone up and up and up. And if you've been following Players Guide for a while and watching Players Guide on YouTube, you sit, you've you seen that, you know, people will say, no, the bubble's going to burst, blah, 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 blah. And I've said, no, it's going up more. These games are going to become more expensive. Um, I could not have predicted... <laughs> the influx that we've seen from COVID. But I can tell you that looking at some of the plateaus here that we've seen with some of these games, um, the the real collectors that are invested in collecting are going to look at a game like this and say, hey, I'm really not seeing this game around much. It's under $100. I'm going to pick it up, especially if those people are going for complete sets. So they're going to stay a copy so it's stuff like this that is is definitely going to go up to the degree that it's gone up now. So here's the thing about this bubble bursting theory. If this game is at $140 and it shoots up to $300 by the end of the year, and then next summer, let's say, it's around $350, and then we start to see it selling for $200, um, there is kind of a bubble going on there but i wouldn't say that the bubble burst and this is why i don't believe in the bubble bursting theory i would say that it deflated to reflect a more accurate market but it certainly didn't burst where you could have got the game for a hundred dollars two years later it's four hundred dollars or 350 and then it, it, it drops down to 200 which is where, where it's at there, because it's still gone up. And who knows? Who even knows over the long term? And, and this, is, this is just an idea. I, I don't believe that this is necessarily what's going to happen, but this it's a possibility. That could be something that we start to see that are the peaks and valleys that we see here over the collecting, right? Like this May 2014 to... August 2015 could be what we've seen and then it drops down you know somewhere like here and it just because it's so high and looks like so much money there's your bubble but really it just kind of is going down then climbs its way back up again and then there's another bump right like it could be these peaks and valleys that we see here uh, throughout the market and, and I mean, that just might be where things are headed because there's only so much to go around and these, these games are getting older and older. It really starts to make me feel old too now. Bronchi the Brontosaurus. This one, you know, it looks like it's had a premium. I would say this is one that's been undervalued for a while. Um, but like who really wanted to pay, I guess, $30 other than collectors for this game at any time ever? Now, you know, it's collectors that are buying this one and it's because it is a rare game that you don't see very often that the value is going up because those collectors can only get their hands on so many copies that are available at any time. Zero the Kamikaze Squirrel. This is a game that was a spinoff of Arrow the Acrobat, which Arrow the Acrobat was super hyped up back in the day. And a lot of people were disappointed with it. So when Air the Acrobat 2 came out, it didn't sell great, let alone a spin-off game um, featuring one of the villains from the game, Zero, the Kamikaze Squirrel. Um, he's now starring in his own game. Uh, but, you know, it was it was part of those those attitude critter characters. This is a game that I would I would call like one of the secret rares. It's not a secret and a rare now. Um, because all the collectors, we're going to see here that I'm sure nostalgia factor pulled this one out of obscurity when a lot of people uh, were living out their nostalgia by going for complete Super Nintendo collections and they, you know, there wasn't a lot of this game available. So, uh, wasn't that expensive. Well, it looks like in 2007 it was, it had a premium, but then it didn't for a long time, which is, which is what I would say. Um, and people weren't really paying attention to it until they started looking for, uh, the, like the lesser known games. And this is a lesser known game that 
you know, just wasn't as available as some of the other lesser known games. So here we can see Nostalgia Factor 2000, 2011, 2012, I would say. Yeah, that's that's Nostalgia Factor started to kick in for Super Nintendo. Um, and then it just kept going up gradually, uh, like we see with a lot of games for um, the Super Nintendo uh, during this time. Now 2017 here had a bit of a dip. I don't know if, I mean, it, it plateaued. It's got some ups and downs here, but it plateaued and saw a bit of a jump. Definitely wasn't one that people were rushing out to buy in, in April of 2020. And then it dropped back down to where it was just over a hundred bucks. And then I don't know, like at the beginning of this year, people just went crazy for Zero the Kamikaze Squirrel. Kid Cleats. Yeah, I think it was at one of the swap meets and, uh, it was like the only copy at the swap meet, obviously. Well, meanwhile, there's like three or four copies of EVO. It's because, you know, the game is rare, but because it's going for so much money and people have it, <clears throat> I think you might see the same thing with Kids Cleats. If Kids Cleats was a $300 game, there probably would have been five copies, right? Um, but yeah, there isn't that many copies because it's it's hard to find and um that's that's ridiculous street racer come on i would have thought this would have been at least at 50 or 60 i know it's not a good game that people want to play but damn it it's not an easy game to find when do you ever see this game i don't because even if you did see it here's the thing in a game store or somewhere it's probably going to get overlooked yeah, it's just like some shitty racing game, right? That's what they're going to look at it and say. I mean, if you look at the cover, it looks pretty interesting. But yeah, that's that's what they're going to say. Meanwhile, I'd say Street Racer is like on uh, the same level as like uh, Hurricanes or Kid Cleats. People recognize Hurricanes now, but yeah, it's uh, that's undervalued. Ninja Gaiden Trilogy. This one has been considered a very rare game for a long time and as we can see here it's always had this premium um and i thought it was steady at 100 bucks for a while maybe that's here it looks like over 100 and then it jumped up 2015 that that kind of seemed like 2016 kind of seemed like the height of super nintendo and nes collecting and then things cooled off in 2017. Super Nintendo really saw a dip, though, in 2019. Uh, this game included. Um, and then it's it's gone up, just like everything else, but not nothing too crazy. We see the April bump here. We see the bump from earlier this year. Super 3D Noah's Ark. This is a rare game. This game is undervalued um, in terms of price to rarity. And we're seeing this a lot with the Super Nintendo where price and rarity, um, it's its more so the uncommon really good games or with a lot of hype behind them that have the most value here. So Super Noah's Ark was, I thought, around $100 for a long time. Here we're seeing just under $100. Uh, here we're seeing it jumping all over the place probably because this is where nostalgia factor is starting to kick in and people are like wow this game it's super rare it's like the only unlicensed game on the super nintendo we never heard of it um so they're wanting it and then um they're not because it's not like a great game that's sought after and there's not a big market for it so we're seeing the big market games get the big market dollars because those are the games that are kind of uncommon and people want them so it really starts to drop here um, as Super Nintendo cools off. Uh, this game takes a dip. It's got a little bump here, but I mean, considering how rare it is and, and what some of these other games are going for, you know, it, it is kind of undervalued. There you have it, folks. That is the state of Super Nintendo collecting and where we're at with Super Nintendo collecting right now. But what it looks like is that there's a lot of people just looking for the really popular uncommon games the ones that have a lot of value in them already and a lot of hype behind them and they're jumping on the hype train it doesn't look like there's a ton of serious collectors out there 
buying the the hidden gems, the secret rares, um, the true rarities in the Super Nintendo collection that maybe don't have as much value in them. So it might be a good time right now to start picking up some of those games. Now, I wasn't able to go through all of them today. Uh, if you caught the live stream, you did see me go a little bit more in depth into that. But still, there's so many. I could have streamed forever and this video could keep going on and on. And I could talk about almost every game. There's so many. Um, but definitely... Head over to price charting, take a look for yourself at some of these games because some of the trends don't make a ton of sense. You know, they make sense in, in a way that um, collectors are going for the games with the hype and the value. They're getting behind that uh, almost in the, um, a speculative sense where people are just um, speculating on their purchases or you know, also buying into the nostalgia where there's certain games that they have to play, not necessarily going for the rarest games because the rarest games aren't necessarily the must play games, but there's some decent ones here that I'm surprised haven't seen more of a price hike. Anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments below and what some of those rare games, those secret rares you think might be or don't because you want to keep them a secret. And do yourself a favor and go pick them up now. That's it for this episode of Player's Guide. And I'll catch you on the flip side.